we continue our inspirational true story series and welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge cycling legend Stephen Swart who is now working with inventive products that are helping save the environment. Morning Steve. Morning, how are you? Really good and nice to have you in the studio with us. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, you you t were a professional cyclist uh, from 1987 to 1995. I mean how much did you love to race? Uh, you love it when you're going good, but you hate it when you're not. Yeah, well, it's like anything really, isn't mm. it? Um, in that time you rode the Tour de France three times? Correct. Oh, that just looks phenomenal, that race. It's just another day at the office. Is it? There you are on screen now. Doesn't look like <laughs> another day at the office to me. I don't wear Lycra in my office job, that's for sure. <laughs> Full body Lycra. Uh, two of those races were with the Motorola team, uh, along with Lance Armstrong, which obviously later went on to reveal that he was using the EPO, uh, an enhancing drug. Um, was that around the time that you decided to give it all up? Yeah, cycling was in a very poor state of health at that time, and that was one of the leading causes. And, you know, I got to a certain age and I decided myself that if I hadn't made it to the tier, mm -hmm. top tier by a certain age, that I was going to give it away. And uh, I, I just looked at it and I thought, at this stage, I couldn't see any future unless I was going to join those uh, that fraternity. And reality is I wasn't. That what, and it basically cheat. <laughs> well, cheat, but I wasn't prepared to put my life on. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know what the long-term effects were going to be. And so many of them did that, though, and they still do do this. I mean, at first you were vilified for blowing the whistle and uh, speaking the truth, which obviously Lance Armstrong strongly denied for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you were named New Zealander of the Year in 2012, uh, and really very inspiring, I think, for for stepping up and speaking out about it. It must have been a tough thing to do. We had some really bad moments. There's no doubt about that, you know, people are just, you know, obviously he was a superstar in everybody's eyes and he could do no wrong. Mm. And uh, here we were just getting pummeled, you know, by, uh, you know, a lot of people I, I even associate with today, but. Did you want to sit back and just say, I told you so, when it all came out? No, I mean, it, hey, it could not maybe it never come out either. So, I mean, touch wood, it, uh, I guess what comes around goes around. Well, you're doing some quite incredible things with your life now too. Uh, you are passionate about this product that you've started working about, Enviroplats. This is what Enviroplats, that's what it's called, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Tell me a little bit about it because you've been telling me in the break and it just sounds fascinating. Yeah, well, um, Peter uh, and another gentleman, uh, Andrew Ferris, Ferrier, you know, he, unfortunately he passed away a couple of years ago. They've been working on this and Peter, this has been Peter's passion for at least 15 years. And this is probably third or fourth reiteration of it. How did you get involved? Uh, with me, uh, I joined well, up with Peter about five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a little bit of a, a plastics background when I used to come back from racing and I got working with a, a company in Hamilton and sort of quite liked it. So it was nice, clean engineering. Mm. So what makes this so special? Well, taking basically all the waste plastic out of the waste stream it's uh, co-mingled. I'm going to have a play made. with everything. Right, yeah. so this here, this is the, this is just, just everything. Every, everything. It doesn't have to be sorted. It doesn't have to be cleaned. It can be... Like peanut butter jars, anything. Anything. jars, yep. plastic bottles. Absolutely. Yeah. All plastic. All plastic. I've made a total mess of that, And then right? basically here you've got your all your uh, paper film bags, uh, all your uh, confectionery bags, you know, with the yep. tin foil on the inside. Okay, your, your chicken, your hot chicken bags. Anything like that. And then we put it through a process and basically turn it into like a stone type chip. Wow. And we can, we can change, so we've changed the whole process of it and then turned it, and then when you use it into a, uh, a standard concrete mix, you end up something looking like concrete. So you can make concrete, set, or the bits in concrete out of plastic is what you're saying? We have now developed a system to allow the concrete paste to adhere to the stone chip or the plastic aggregate. Well, yeah. that's quite exciting. So that means you can make the stuff and you are not going to be, there's not going to be no quarrying for the rocks or anything. You can make it out of waste. Well, less quarrying. I mean, to say plastic will ne never uh, get to the mm -hmm. equivalent volumes of what uh, aggregate is used in the construction industry right. now. So, But it's still an exciting step. Exactly. So what do you do now then? Uh, try and get something up and running. Wow, that's because it's it's one of those things which you you almost don't believe can happen that you can make concrete like this out of bits of plastic and bit of bits of waste. I'm sure people have tried in the past and have different yeah. things, and I know Peter has, and it hasn't quite met the standard, but he's really excited about this because it meets all the criteria set out. So is it going to be very good for the environment? Obviously, 
well, it takes care of a big problem that everyone has in front of them at the moment. These? Everything, isn't These it? plastic bags. Mm -hmm. No, it certainly does. Well, that's very exciting. I hope you go um, great guns with that. Uh, very exciting. So are you still cycling? Do you have time for that still? Uh, a little bit often. No, oh, not, as, not as often as I'd like. Mm. Mm. Do you get out there in your full body lycra? Are you a mammal? Middle-aged man in lycra? There's no other way to, no other way to ride. <laughs> <laughs> no other way to ride. Well, good luck with this. It is a fascinating subject. I could talk to you about it for a long time. Best of luck. Thank um, you. We hope we see this in all the uh, building in the future. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, Brent.